Down here at the bottom of the screen we have a typical automotive circuit. It's a car battery, 12 volts. We've got a headlight, lamp bulb. We have a headlight switch and we have the resistance of the headlight wiring. Wires actually have resistance, therefore when you light a headlamp the resistance has an effect. It has to be considered. So before we, before we dive into the circuit, let's take a look at some basic rules up here. It has to do with DC circuits series. A voltage never flows in a circuit, only current flows. The battery doesn't move around a circuit, it only makes sense, right? The battery is the voltage source, it just sets there. What it does, it forces current through the circuits and the resistance determines how much current can be forced through the circuits. So voltage never flows. And here's why I say voltage flows, it shows that they're being ignorant. In DC circuits, voltage never flows. Resistance usually generates unwanted heat when current flows. These wires have a resistance. Notice we have a lump equivalent value. We could draw a million little tiny resistors along all these wires. That's kind of stupid. We'll just put a, an amount equal to the sum of all these millions of tiny resistors it equals one big resistor. It's called an equivalent value. So this is wasted energy. This heat generated by this wire it's just wasted energy. It doesn't do any work for us. It doesn't light the road. It doesn't help us see any better. But it's a necessary evil. Resistance usually generates unwanted heat when current flows through that resistance. Now there's two kinds of voltage. Voltage source and voltage drop. Obviously the battery is a voltage source. He generates electron flow. The resistance limits the electron flow and each limiting factor to electron flow causes a voltage drop. So as current passes through this resistor, there's going to be a voltage drop across that resistor. As current passes through the switch, there'll be a voltage drop across the switch. As current passes through this bulb, there'll be a voltage drop across the bulb. And the next item, Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of all voltage drops about a circuit must be equal to the voltage source. So 12 volts is the voltage source. This 10 volts plus this 0.5 volts plus this unknown has to equal 12 volts according to Kirchhoff's voltage law. So just looking at that, we know 10 and a half from 12 is what? 1.5 volts must be across the resistance of the headlight wiring. Just using Kirchhoff's voltage law. But we can find it other ways and we'll do that shortly. The last rule we have to consider is the voltage source is voltage to battery terminals. So the source is right here, this plus terminal and minus terminal of battery. That's our voltage source in the circuit. Everything else in the circuit is a voltage drop. We're sort of saying again what we said up here. With that all in mind, now let's take a look at the circuit for a moment. Battery has negative charge electrons on the negative terminal, and they want to get to the positive terminal. The only way you do that is come down here, go through this resistance with the headlight wiring, go through the switch, which most people think a switch has no resistance. Contacts have resistance. Go through the resistance of the bulb and back to the positive side of the battery. So electron current flow is in this direction, counterclockwise. In many colleges, they teach the old conventional current flow, which is what they thought a hundred years ago, they thought current flowed this way through a circuit, from the positive to negative. That's called conventional current flow, but it's not real. It's make-believe. Electrons, free electrons are what move in a wire. The free electrons are pushed through the wire in this direction, and that's called electron current flow, from negative all the way around to positive, the battery. So if you hear people saying, oh, it's conventional current flow, that means it's a myth. It's current leaving the positive side of the battery, going through everything, and end up back to the negative side of the battery. It's not true. It's not real. It's make-believe. Electron current flow is the only thing that is real. So now we made that distinction. Let's go ahead and see what we want to know about this circuit. 
Okay, let's take a moment here and see what we, what we know about this circuit. Someone took an amp meter and they measured the current at the negative terminal of the battery and they found it to be 5 amps. So we're given that the current in the circuit is 5 amps. We know there's 10 volts across the bulb. We know there's 0.5 volts across the switch. We realize using Kirchhoff's voltage law, there's 1.5 volts across the resistance of the headlight wiring. So now what you got to do is solve for the voltage drop of the headlight wiring using Ohm's law. Solve for the resistance of the light bulb using Ohm's law. Solve for the resistance of the switch using Ohm's law. Resistance of the headlight wiring using Ohm's law. The power dissipated by the bulb using Ohm's law for P. Power dissipated dissipated by the switch, Ohm's law, for power. Power dissipated by the headlight wiring, Ohm's law, for power. And the total power delivered by the battery. So the power dissipated by the light bulb, the switch, and the wire will equal the power delivered by the battery. As we state up here, in the circuit below, assume the battery resistance equals zero. Solve for the following items. So we're going to pretend this is a magical battery, it has no internal resistance and later we're going to delve into what the resistance inside a battery actually does. But for right now it's your first exposure to a series circuit, we want to keep it simple. So go ahead and solve all these values using Ohm's law. And if you not don't remember you can always back up in the video, back up to where we discuss the various equations which allow you to solve all these answers. So good luck. Okay, we're pausing for a little bit because we want to show you the answers. We want to make sure that you know the answers are coming. So if you don't want the answers, don't proceed with this video. If you do want the answers, here are all the answers to check your work with. We've gone through and solved all these answers ourselves, and we believe these are accurate answers. So there should be a mistake please let us know because we are after all human just like you. So good luck with this project. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about a series circuit, all the parameters you can determine about a series circuit. So good luck with Ohm's Law.